so I started this <laughs> I started this live feed as far as um, talking about this important subject but I had to cut it short but I'm back this is so important and it's it's something that affects everybody because the world literally acknowledges this subject and this topic that I'm going to talk about and the subject is um, should Christians not the world because that's that's the tradition of the world but should Christians celebrate Christmas and I'm I'm this is not my words this is not something that I I, I <laughs> I'm um, it's not it's not pleasant as far as just me just wanting to just bash people and and step down on people and and stuff like that no but this is something that as Christians we have to know if we're not aware Christmas has nothing to do with God. Christmas is a tradition of the world. It's a tradition that the whole world has, has embraced. And as Christians, if we really want to follow after God, we are admonished to have nothing to do with the world. Matter of fact, in Luke chapter 16, verses 15, if I'm not mistaken, let me go there real quick and read it to you. Luke chapter 16 verses 15 he says and he said unto them ye are they which justify yourselves before men but God knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God meaning everything that the world prizes everything that the world loves everything that the world cherishes and and celebrates most if not all of it is an abomination in the sight of God why is that because most of the celebrations in the world today unfortunately is celebrating Satan the enemy of God at the end of the day when you break when you, you break it down to its bare bones when you peel back all the layers of the onion so to speak of all the celebrations meaning all the festivities and all the celebrations in the world that the world celebrates most of it, if not all, is a celebration of Satan himself, right? And so I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3. No, sorry. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11. And he says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I'm going to read that again and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I'm not taking pleasure in telling you that Christmas is a celebration of Satan. It's not something that, you know, I, I'm just sitting here trying to bash anybody. But God says when we don't know, he winks at. But when we do know, or when we come to find out, when he finally opens our eyes to it, he expects us to turn away from the things or the idols of the world that has taken possession of, that has taken hold of us, that has just, has taken like a, a huge seat, <laughs> so to speak, on our hearts. So Christmas is pagan, period. Point blank, period, end of story. All aspects of it is pagan. Pagan in the sense that Christmas came into the world or it's actually started to be celebrated in Rome. It's one of the festivities that Rome, as when they were a nation, celebrated. And now Rome as a church, it's part of its tradition as far as a Roman church. But Rome started celebrating and it's a, it was a celebration of Saturn, your God, your main God. It was a celebration of of I think his birthday which was between the 17th and the 24th of December right because the 24th or the 25th of December is not the birth of Jesus Christ at all there is nowhere in the Word of God that you hear or read that the Apostles anywhere celebrated the birth of Jesus none you won't find it anywhere and it, Jesus was not even born in December because the shepherds will not be in the field in, in the winter colds and the winter months it will not be in the field like that because remember, the angels came and announced to the shepherds that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born. It was not in winter at all. At all. And so the celebration of the feast of Saturnalia, which is the god Saturn of the Roman, one of the huge Roman gods, his celebration was between the 17th and the 24th of December. And so 
when Constantine, who was one of the emperors of Rome in 12, no, excuse me, in 312 AD, when finally he couldn't kill all the Christians because the apostles, by the grace of God, went, went everywhere preaching the word of God and there were a lot of converts. And Rome tried to extinguish the Christians, but it just couldn't happen. They just kept multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And finally, Constantine said, if you can't beat them, join them, right? And so Constantine, quote unquote, converted into Christianity. He, on, in 312 AD, he converted into Christianity. And guess what he did? All the pagan rituals, all the pagan holidays that they had and they celebrated in Rome, he brought all of it into the church. They just changed the names of it, right? And so Chris, Christmas, <laughs> even though it sounds like, you know, there's Christ in there, it has nothing to do with Christ. It's Christ Mass. It's a mass celebration that they celebrate, right? And so Constantine comes into the church and he brings all the pagan rituals and all the pagan rites and all the pagan festivities and celebrations into the church. And since then, somehow the world has embraced this, this pagan, pagan at its root. Because literally, the gift giving, the image of Santa Claus, this, 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 the Christmas stockings, the Christmas caroling, the decking of the halls with holly and decorating the trees, they're all actual aspects of pagan rituals that was done for Saturnalia, Saturn, the Roman God. And so it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. So if you are wondering, should I celebrate Christmas as a Christian? The answer to you, my brother and my sister, and I say that with humility, and I say that humbly, the answer is no, because there's nowhere in the word of God that God has commanded us to celebrate Christmas anywhere. There is nowhere in the word of God that the apostles have told us to celebrate Jesus Christ. The only thing the Lord tells us to celebrate or has allowed us to celebrate is the Lord's Supper. Like like drinking the wine and eating the bread in his name, in remembrance of his, of his death and his resurrection. And so Jesus Christ should not be celebrated as a baby constantly every year. No, he is a king. He is a living king. He is in the holies of holies. He's in the holy of holies right now, the king of the universe interceding for you and I, waiting for us to come to him so he can put... He can help us put away our sins. Anyone that celebrates Christmas, basically you're turning your back on God because you're celebrating Satan. And guess what? That's the name Santa. That's Satan spelled backwards. Santa is just literally for a lack of, not even a lack of a better word. Matter of fact, Satan spelled backwards. Christmas is not for you. Have nothing to do with it in the name of Jesus. It has nothing to do with Christians and all the other holidays like Halloween and, and, and the rest of them. Nothing to do with, with, with Jesus Christ our Lord whatsoever. I'm going to read a little bit of, 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 of um, let me see. Okay, so I'm going to read a little bit of, of some of the things that is done in Christmas and which is connected to paganism. All right, so the giving of gifts. <sighs> it says, I'm reading something here, and it just says, um, not only is December a time to celebrate winter solstice, and winter solstice celebration mainly is, is for the, the Wiccans and the Druids and the Pagans. Basically, that's one of the, the main celebrations. It says, not only is December a, a time to celebrate winter solstice, but between the 17th and the 24th of the month, the Romans also celebrated Saturnalia. This was a pagan holiday in order of the agricultural god Saturn. Romans will spend the week of Saturnalia much like how we spend Christmas holidays today. Feasting, drinking, giving gifts, and being joyful. Mm. Back then, the Romans exchanged small gifts for the sake of good luck. 
the idea was to give a gift in the hope of bringing in a bountiful harvest next year rather than having rather than have huge lists of gifts to give the Romans also shared only one gift with one person all right and so there, there's no other way for me to just say it over and over again every aspect of, of of course now it's commercialized and it's made universal and and people are making big bucks and big money on it but at the end of the day at its core at its roots it is a celebration of the devil of satan himself because saturn is satan himself so have nothing to do with it. Not the caroling, not the songs, not the gift giving, not the decorating of trees, not drinking the eggnogs. All of it have pagan roots. And actually, the caroling that you know people will go around singing stuff like that for people. That was to 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 to, to for lack of a better word, that that was to push away or to drive away de demonic spirits. They they'll go about. In the towns and the countries back then as far as in a celebration of Saturnalia and sing for people right trying to, to drive away demon spirits or or e to, to drive away evil spirits and then of course the, the eggnog that used to be a drink that they drank they made and they drink that drink while they were singing those carols it is pagan at its core have nothing to do with it. it is not for you if you love Jesus Christ if you have a heart to follow God all the way because he says he that comes after me, you have to forsake everything. That includes the customs of the world, the traditions of the world, the habits of the world. It's not pleasant. It's not pleasant as far as maybe you hearing me say this, but following Christ comes at a cost. It comes at a price. You have to pick up your cross and follow Jesus Christ. And that also means letting go of certain, certain things. That is, that is letting go of the world, period letting go of the world period because you cannot serve god and mammon meaning you cannot serve god and the world you cannot have one foot in the church and one foot in the world god says he calls you know that kind of condition of or that kind of christians he calls them lukewarm and when you read the book of revelations guess what he said about lukewarm christians Christians that are not fully committed. Christians that are following him for gain. Christians that are just, you know, want to follow God because it's a popular thing to do. Christians that have one foot in the world and one foot in the, in the church. He calls those kinds of Christians lukewarm. And he says he's going to spew you out of, out of his mouth. He's going to vomit you out because it is detestable for him. It, it, it's, it's, it's an abomination to him. He says, the things that men esteem is an abomination unto him. And Paul is saying, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Right? And so I say all that to say, Christmas is not for you, my brother and my sister. Have nothing to do with it. The way to celebrate Jesus Christ, he's already told us, is when we, we drink the Lord's Supper. That's number one. And number two, being a blessing to your fellow men. And number three, let's walk the talk. My prayer, my prayer always is that God help me to live what I say, not just to say to people and then live another way, not just to say to people and then be lost myself, right? It comes at a cross to follow Jesus Christ. And so have nothing to do with Christmas. Save your money, give it to the, give it to the poor or, 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 or save your money and do something do something for God with it, right? Have nothing to do because the moment you, 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 <laughs> the moment you celebrate, you, everything is about worship. Everything is about who you will worship. Everything is about who will have your heart as far as when it comes to uh, 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 spirituality. And God wants all your worship. God wants all your heart. He wants all your mind. He wants everything about you. Because guess what? The moment you participate in any part of Christmas, any part of any holidays and festivities, you are literally worshiping Satan, whether you know it or not. And as hard as it is for me to say it, and as hard as it is for you to hear it, it's the truth. I'm sorry, my brothers and sisters, but I have to say it. Because if I don't, God will hold me accountable for what I know and not speaking, right? And now that you have heard, it is 
it is it is our duty yours and mine to turn away from anything that God opens our eyes to or gives us understanding about and so this is this I just wanted to make a quick video and to just talk about this huge celebration that is coming up that the whole world even non Christians atheists everybody else participate in it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ he was not born on the 25th of December Uh, -uh. that's Saturn you celebrating that is Saturn you celebrating and inviting demons literally into your home because if God is not the center of your attention, if God is not the one you're worshiping, you're, 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 you're setting him aside, whether you know it or not. And inviting Satan into your home, into your heart, into your life. And who wants that? Who in the world wants that? Right? So I'm, I, 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 I'm not making this video to offend <laughs> because I know it's going to step on a lot of toes. But I have to say it. I must say it. As Christians, we should have nothing to do with the world. May God bless you. Thank you for listening to this message. May God bless you and give you better understanding. And if you doubt what I'm saying, just do your own research. You don't have to listen to what I'm saying at all. Do your own research and find out for yourself. And matter of fact, pray to the Holy Spirit to give you understanding, to open your eyes, to open your heart, to give you understanding. Forget what I just said. Pray to the Holy Spirit to show you whether what, what I've just said to you is the truth or a lie. And then you decide from there and go from there. But, it, but I hope that God blesses you. I hope that God keeps you. I hope that God ha has mercy on you and, 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 and continue to guide you into our heavenly home. Until next time.